I can't wear something that someone that's maybe flat chested could wear because I'll look slutty in it. I think the female figure is a weird thing where I usually lean drawing like curvier women and I think it comes off as sexy to some people because curves are considered to be sexual. It's almost frustrating. You know, it's like one of those things where it's like, ah, really they're just curves. Like just because this figure is more curvy than that figure doesn't mean that it's more sexual. This is Radio Juxtapose. Gillian Evelyn is an LA-based painter that explores female identity. Like many aspects of 2020, her work is going through some big changes this year. Known for her confined and contorted depictions of the female form, her characters have broken free in her latest show Still Life at Subliminal Projects in LA. And much like her characters, Gillian herself has recently broken free from the confinement of her role as a commercial illustrator to find her footing as an independent artist. A firm favourite in the Juxtapose office, Evan Preco and myself Doug Gillen were really excited to sit down with Gillian and for a brief period her mum Pam to talk about life, art and titties. If this is your first time walking into Radio Juxtapose, thanks for joining us. Be sure to hit us up on the socials, let us know what you think or if there's any guests or topic you'd love us to have on the show. Still Life is now open and will be running at the weekends until December 20th at Subliminal Projects in LA. Appointments are required. Enjoy the show. Jillian Evelyn, Los Angeles, California. How are you doing today? I'm great, all considering. I mean, I think that Georgia and Pennsylvania and Nevada are going to be blue, and then this is all going to be over. I mean, it won't be because Trump's a baby, but that's how it's going to start. That's the that's the start of the podcast. <laughs> just you, just, just a loop of you going, Trump's a baby, Trump's a baby. <laughs> I'm curious because we have to talk about it because this is just what's on everyone's mind, and even when it comes this comes out, it was going to be on everyone's mind. But uh, how have you? How's the last couple days been for you? I mean, are are you somebody who? watches the news constantly cuz i i'm somebody who wants to see the moment where like fox news calls it or something you know like i want to watch this stuff happen but i know a lot of people too who are like i'm taking a break so i don't have a tv so i'm not like a i'm not watching the news i'm a po- like i have been just playing npr and then i'll take breaks here and there and then i'll like recheck in to see what's going on and constantly like I just have notifications on my phone for like breaking news that's more <laughs> of a healthy it. for way the to election for the election not mm. just everything but um <laughs> I'm just not watching the news I'm just mm. listening <laughs> torturing my ears instead of my eyes as well gotta be quite hard not to get pulled into that uh just that complete cycle like i i I've found it just sitting there just like i'm trying to do other things i don't know if it's just the way that they report it but they get you in and you're like this you know that this is going to be like at least a day away but you're still like what's happening now what's happening now and yeah it's it's quite hard to to separate yourself from that it's just never taken this long which is understandable but i think that we're so used to having an answer by like the following day and this keeps being like so close and you think and they're like why have they been at 99 percent for the past 48 hours like it just what is it i looked back though there's like there's like there's states from like 2016 that are like still like 99.8 percent counted you know like it's just we're just yeah. never this at this point where we're so involved that i think we're we're learn- I, I've learned about counties that I never knew exist. I'm so, my geography is so on point right now. Like, get me in front of a United States map. I will break down Maricopa County in Arizona <laughs> like, like no other. Do you paint at this point? Like, do you go like, I'm going to go to the studio. And I know you have a new studio. So are you like going and and feeling inspired? Or are you like, break, I got a show next week. I'm on a break. Well, <laughs> so I, I don't have my studio anymore. I just moved out of it because I moved to Pasadena. Okay. And I moved okay. my studio to my place. So, and I just finally got everything moved in last week. And I'm doing a few extra pieces for the show or I'm meant to be because we're starting to like hang and stuff tomorrow. 
and I've been, I've meant to work on them the entire week, but I haven't been able to. It's like, okay. yeah, I'm just, I'm definitely sucked in. And if it's not that, like, I'm like, okay, I need to go for a walk. I need to like move my body because I'm just paralyzed with, it doesn't, I'm excited now. It's like, really feels like the clouds are starting to go away from the past four years. Like it's just been having him as the president. He's just so toxic. So toxic. I can also confirm that not having him as a president uh, is also <laughs> pretty toxic. I'd, I'd really just like that headspace that he's hijacked for me. Like I, his his decisions don't really affect me, but yet here I am with him occupying all this brain space in my daily life, and I'd I'd like that back, please. Well, and it's just his face. I hate his face. I've never hated someone's yeah. face so much. Yeah. Like his policies were, mm, but his face is the thing that I really hate. Well, also, it's like, it's almost like so easy to make political parodies of him that it's almost like lost meaning in the art world to like do a Trump painting and like mm. make him look bad. Like it's like, what, what is it's so easy. It's not even, there's not even concepts behind it. It's just a face. You're right. It's a face and that's it. There's not um, a lot of, he's so easy to criticize that it felt like even the art criticism around him had a rough patch. It's tough when you're making fun of him, but in a way it's all true. You know what I mean? Where Mm. any jokes, even that they made on SNL, it would be, it was like oh, literally no, just reporting. That's exactly what he said. Yeah, word right. for word. Like this isn't a joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's just that crazy. I just wonder, like, what kind of like narcissist social sociopath he is. Like, he has made like therapist jobs both harder and easier. I think to explain what people's conditions are. Yeah. Well, and I, and the probably more people are getting therapy. <laughs> oh well, that I mean absolutely. But I think it's like it's playing out in front of us. This the the, the extreme narcissism um but let's talk about you wait yeah, go ahead let's talk about art he doesn't deserve any more yeah good i'm yeah. glad yeah. You, i'm glad yeah. you got let's there. talk about let's talk about art sometimes um, you just got to get it out of the system though yeah let's just let's, yeah we're yeah we're in a good mood now um how are you feeling about i know you kind of explained it but you do have a show at subliminal projects next week and from the looks of the previews and the little things that you've posted I think it's a departure and something really fresh and new from you. But I know that it's also, you, you're you making incremental changes too. But for, for me, it feels like this is a very, very new body of work from you. How are you feeling? Yeah, I think it feels new. I feel like it feels much more mature, if that makes sense. And I think that partly goes to the color palette. I think that just from drawing constantly and working on it, like, I'm my drawing has gotten better and there's other things that I'm thinking like I have more sp- headspace to think about and focus on I mean okay so we met what three years ago at Jack's clubhouse or I think it, it was yeah it was 2017 three. yeah okay yeah so this show has been booked since right because Sarah the manager of subliminal saw my work at Jack's clubhouse and so then we met in January right when I got back from Basel and we plan the show. So we've had this like plan for a while and it's just interesting, like going back and looking back at our conversation that we had then and what the show would be like, for example, I was like, Oh, I'm going to do vases, which I had, I had done before. And I, I've had some vases here that I have primed and like ready to paint. And I just like cannot get myself to do it. Like I just have n- no interest or motivation to want to paint them. Maybe I will, but they've been staring at me for a good two weeks now, maybe a month. <laughs> I don't know. I think that I just had more time. Like this show was the first time like that I didn't really overbook myself. Like I made sure I gave myself time. And two, I mean, I it was quarantine. I was in like lockdown the entire time basically. And all you could do was work. And uh, the whole show was like very much like, thinking about those little moments and being like kind of stuck in your head. And I mean, the show is called it's, it's still life, which is it's kind of like still moments in, in your life, but it's, I don't know. It's just like that. I, it's such a good idea. name. 
What is it about the vases? I'm going to say vases for you guys. Uh, I felt uncomfortable. <laughs> no, say, I feel like I've just, say, I've just, say I've just your betrayed way. my home, homeland. Uh, what is it about the vases uh, that, you <laughs> <laughs> that you don't want to, that's, that's yeah, unappealing for you at the moment? I think that like my work used to be a lot more um, based on fitting a figure into an abstract your glass is like disappearing <laughs> sorry uh, i don't know if you've noticed but this is all fake <laughs> yeah, this is it's all real. fake <laughs> sorry but yeah so i don't it's not really about bending and contorting the figures into a, a canvas or a particular shape anymore and i used to be really inspired by that and love playing around with different things and figuring out how to work within that space but that's not what really like inspires the work as much now it's harder i think for me to figure out exactly what to do on it and the the now this space feels limiting and not like something that i want to work within and they're smaller like i enjoy painting bigger did the characters just become free of that confinement yeah i think that they kind of grew with me whereas like my when i was first started doing the work i just left you know corporate life um I was working in footwear for a while and also just doing a lot of stuff. And I still, it's so easy to fall into the rhythm of doing things like what you should be doing. And but now since I've been out of that world for three years now, I just feel more free and I don't feel contained. And I also don't know if I want to keep that message going of containing females. Like mm. I want them to feel bigger and i want to give off that idea of something else more than just um i don't know because like they are constraining and those paintings are kind of like feel a little painful mm. because they're such uncomfortable yeah. positions those angles yeah. those necks especially you're right, just like for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which is funny because there's a definite irony in the fact that we've all gone into lockdown and they've we've become contained and suddenly they're not yeah yeah yeah, but I mean, I'm an introvert, so lockdown wasn't really that extreme for me. It wasn't that much of a change. Mm. I enjoyed it. You're not the first artist that we've spoken to that said that. I know. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jillian, did you, did you seek any advice from other people who might have come from kind of a more corporate design background uh, who had left to, to pr pursue a fine art career? and maybe also felt that same confinement? Because that's that's a, I feel like I've heard that thread before, but I've never really discussed it with anyone, that there is this sort of uh, formula that perhaps you get stuck in when you leave that world, and uh, maybe you sought advice from somebody. No, I don't think I've really talked to anybody about that. A lot <laughs> of my friends are still in. They still work. They're just higher up now. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's some times where I'm like, huh, maybe... I should have stayed. <laughs> they, they just bought a house. That's really nice. With blood money. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have no. any uh, footwear sponsorship. Yeah, I was going to say, podcast. by the way, if anyone wants to sponsor this podcast. <laughs> yeah, watch out. I, I still have ties. I still have ties there. Let's not. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, maybe. But not really. Yeah. I can't think of anybody that, but I mean, of course that happens like that. Even art school, I feel like is a little bit of you end up having to unlearn so much of the stuff that you were taught. And even growing up, like think about how much stuff that your parents taught you. And then all of a sudden later in life, you're like, that's not right. <laughs> or that's weird. What's a, what's a big example? Can you give us yeah, an example, example of something you've had to unlearn? Art wise? I actually no 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 that, no you've opened this up <laughs> let's go we'll start off with art and then we'll go into a greater life life wise yeah oh gosh okay so well first art I think for a long time because I went to school for illustration I really felt like I needed to include environments mm. and I just have always hated environments I don't enjoy painting them I don't enjoy anything about them <laughs> And it took me for a long time. I think somebody did say something to me like that about that once. Like, why do you feel like you need to add an environment? And finally, I was like, oh, I guess I don't need to. And that made me feel more okay going into my style and not feeling like I should be doing something else 
with it. Like there needs to be more for people to, I don't know, to feel like it's interesting or to find more in it. Um, so, I mean, that's like a, something that I learned a long time ago. Yeah, let's go big world now. I think that was a solid a art answer. What's li yeah? What life thing are you? Did you shed? Oh my god! I mean, I'm from the Midwest, from Michigan. We love Michigan right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You have no idea. I'm so relieved. I can go home and visit and not feel as ashamed. There's still gonna. There's still Trump supporters there. Obviously, they're losing their minds. What's the environment that you grew up in like? My parents met at. Um, GM, they both worked at a factory. And so very Michigan, like my entire family basically worked for either Ford or GM. And then um, my parents moved us out into the country to Chelsea, Michigan, where Jeff Daniels and Jiffy Mix is from. Wait, what was, what was it? What was the second thing? Jiffy Mix. Have you ever like the cornmeal, like in the blue box, the blue and white box? Nice. Oh, you have. It's not like every grocery store. Okay. All right. So I, uh, okay. I've seen it. Okay. And so that was a big thing. Got tours of that, uh, almost every grade growing up of the factory. But yeah, so I grew up in the country, grew up on a lake, had three older brothers. My dad worked full time in the factory and then also built houses on the side. And then when I was in middle school, my mom went back to school for interior design. My mom's always been like on the creative side. Mm. And so she was never really into drawing, but Having her um, do that was kind of helpful and more made my interest in art more understandable for her. And so they weren't necessarily supportive until they, I don't think my parents understood me going into art until I got a job at Converse. And it was something that they had heard of and seen. They really didn't want me to leave there. They're like, but the Nike owns them. Like, this is such a safe job. Like, you could just stay there forever it'll be fine. Just stay. But yeah, I guess, I don't know. My childhood, it was good, but yeah, I lived out in the country, so I didn't have that many kids to play with besides my brothers and maybe like a few, I don't know, just a country kid. Where was your uh, initial interest in art coming from then? So I think that first off, it was like the only thing that I was, I could like have as my own growing up. Like that was what I was always good at. And so that kind of fueled me where I was like, I was, I've always been able to draw and I don't know why or how, but it was, um, I was just like that kid that could draw. And then people, little kids would ask me to draw things for them. And it was something I could do better than my brothers, which was always like the nice. goal. Like I wanted to be better at my brothers than something because they're always bigger than me. Always want to, because they're all older too. It was like two years, four years, and then my oldest brother is 11 years older than me. And so it was just like the thing that I could have is my own. And so, and then I found like little things. Like I was so obsessed with like Sanrio growing up and like with Love Stationery. Um, I, I can't remember the name, but I used to go on vacation with this, these neighbor family like up in Glen Arbor, Michigan. And there was this screen printer or like older woman that used to make all these little like cards and they're all letter pressed, but they're all animals. And I like coveted them. Like anytime we went up there, I just thought they were like the most beautiful, well-drawn, amazing things in the whole wide world. Like I would never write on them. I would just like look through them and keep them and like I don't, you know, it was just like one of those funny things. Like I would buy cards to keep them and never give them away because I loved the graphics. I wish I could remember her name. Um, but yeah, that, and then like, I loved cartoons, um, Rugrats. I was always like convinced I was going to redraw Rugrats because I didn't understand style. I was always just like, this is so scribbly and shaky. It could be drawn so much better. And yeah, so, and then I had like a, um, when I got to high school, I had a, a high school friend whose dad was an art teacher and then his brother was an artist and was going to art school. And I didn't really realize that was an option. And so then they helped me put together my um, portfolio and, you know, made me realize that like there are, there is a career, like you can do something in art. It's not just like something that you do for fun on the side. I love that because we 
Doug and I spoke with a, a curator at the Toledo Museum of Art uh, last week, and she's also from Toledo, Ohio. And there is a rich tradition of the arts in the Midwest that um, gets under undervalued a little bit because of the, the, the coasts, right, in America. But when we go back and look at what's going on in the Midwest, there's so much, uh, there's so many like great collections of art from the old industrial age. And there's just so many just interesting stories that have come out of the Midwest that like need to be, you know, celebrated and talked about. And I'm wondering if in hindsight you think about that because when you're young, you don't know. See, I think that I was like, well, maybe, I mean, I was surrounded by, I would say crafts over anything like, like quilts and like my grandma always did like like the stitching like that and it would be like santa on like the round whatever and put them into pillows um and things like that my mom was always making random crafts like like she even used to make um like earrings out of um like clay and stuff growing up so things like that but then when it comes to like the art in michigan i mean you had I mean, the DIA is one of the best museums. There is so much great work. And you have, I don't know, like Michigan is like a beautiful state. And there is a lot of creativity. I mean, you have, and there's so much stuff that came out of there, like Motown. And I mean, too, I grew up outside of Ann Arbor. So like you always had the Ann Arbor Art Fair. And like Ann Arbor hope- such- I was hoping you were going to be like, you know, Motown, the White Stripes, Kid Rock. Oh. I was just hoping for just that one little. <laughs> Sorry. Is that what you wanted? No, no I, I went to the Ann Arbor. I, I don't there. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, too, and like Ann Arbor is like a very weird. Hmm. Like, Ann Arbor's had hash bash forever. And like, where you could like actually smoke like have weed on you and only get like i think a five dollar ticket or something and that's been for like the for a while like back when i was a kid so it just kind of had this like fun hippie artsy vibe to it and then the decision to go to art school was that met with support from from the home or was it kind of like (sighs) what are you going to do with this what are you doing (laughs) yeah yeah, there was a lot of, it was, it was scary too. Like I graduated high school in 2005 and that's when, um, like, like the recession really started. So my parents actually had to file bankruptcy that year. Lot, we lost our house and like my dad had just put all of his savings and money and building in this house. And, like that was his like retirement plan. And, and it was like an amazing house had like a movie theater like because my dad's always built everything like every house we've lived in he's built and my mom was designing kitchens at the time so they put all their like love into this house and it probably took like five years to build and then you know like gm had a bunch of layoffs like that the factory that my dad had worked at closed and like yeah so they're like we can't help you like we can't like, we don't think this is a good idea. Like, A, art school is expensive. They're like, you should really just think about going to, like, a community college or a state, like, a smaller state school, not a private school. I think my school at the time, it was private. I went to the College of Creative Studies. But I was like, no. And I took out a bunch of loans and, like, <laughs> still paying those off. But um, I'm almost done paying them off, luckily. Um, but, yeah, they were just scared. I think that they're really supportive now. My mom does ask me why I always have to paint so many titties. She's like, can't you just put some clothes on them sometimes? She doesn't say titties, though, does she? Yeah, she'll say titties or boobies. (laughs) Titties or boobies. Amazing. I was just curious what moms, how moms (laughs) refer to them. I don't know. Just... I think I'd feel weird if my mom called them titties. I would too. That's why I, 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 I couldn't hear titties come out from titties my mom. And that's in my head. And she calls yeah, yeah. them boobies. Maybe you say titties back to her. And Maybe. she says boobies. Well, I, let's, text, let's text Pam and I'll ask her what she calls boobs. Yeah, text her. <laughs> Let her... Hey, Stay till so... the end of the episode and you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, usually call. It's, you know what's Ooh. interesting? Oh my god, that's so funny. It's funny that you just mentioned that your dad built had built all the houses you lived in, and you didn't mention his dad as something that might fairly be creative around you as a kid. I mean, yeah, that's true. I also definitely like my dad didn't build me. my dad didn't build a house. Like he's never lifted a finger in his life. So like I had no creativity or any like no blueprints out as a kid. So like I'm just curious, like what? Oh uh, yeah, you, that's true. That's that's kind of a big. You you grew up around things that were being made and made by hand. That seems yes, to be yes. something that is uh you've that you're carrying that tradition in your own way. Yeah, totally. And like I mean my dad helped me frame my one of my shows last year and yeah, I, that's true. I was always around it and my dad we there's like kind of this ongoing joke that my dad would always take photos of all the houses that he built. And like, we'll go through like the piles of photos and it's like, cool, here's another house that dad built or some like side job that he had, like redoing these bay windows that he's proud of, but like didn't take any photos of us. <laughs> Just oblivious. Like he was so proud of these projects, but his children, meh, like uh, questionable. It's all coming out now. Dad's I hope men. he's not listening. Oh, he knows this. There's a video. Okay. Okay. Even okay. Of- Good. Good. <laughs> When we were kids, you can hear us in the background going, Dad, Dad, like, get us on camera, like, trying to get him to videotape us. And he's just going around and videotaping our condo that we were staying at in Florida. This is the bathroom. This is this. This is the view. And, like, you can hear us yelling, like, wanting to be on camera. Could have cared less. He knew what he was doing. Look at the curves on this sink. Oh, I love it. That's a vicious sink. <laughs> it's, it's 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 basically like having an Instagram for your food, except with a yeah. sort of pre-gen version of that. You know, yeah. I think I I, I kind of get it. Yeah. Um. This is by no means something that is trying to criticize uh where you worked before, but like, what did you have like a a breaking point when you were working at Converse or something where you're just like, this is not for me. I don't want to live in. I mean, Boston is. I know that's where you were, but did, or yeah. was it just something that you like, you know, I've always just wanted to be a painter and this is, this is probably not going to help me become a painter. Always knew I wanted to be. I definitely did not have my style. I used to do a lot uh, more like cutesy, illustrative type of work. And I felt like that's, it's definitely, I'm definitely a late bloomer and B, I like listened to people a lot of times when I was younger, where it was like, oh, you should stick to this because you're good at that. And like kind of the impression like that my drawing was just never going to get better or something or like, or that's what was expected of me to do as a female. And like, I should try to make like polite work or um, work that everyone can enjoy. So I used to only do like animals and it was very cute. And that was kind of on the side, like I'd always do, still do like illustration jobs and um, whatnot, what I can after work. Um, So at Converse, I designed kids shoes. And then I ended up starting doing freelance for this design company in Boston. And now my mom's calling me. I opened a. Oh, you've opened a can (laughs) of tea rooms. Do I get mom on the uh, podcast or no? Get her on. No, just ask her. Put her on loudspeaker and ask her the question. Okay. You ready? I'll yeah, back. this is a first. This, is, yeah, we haven't done this. This is fun. <laughs> we're we're in a good Hello? mood today, folks. Hi. What are you asking me? I'm asking you what you call boobs. What do I call boobs? <laughs> yeah. Boobs. <laughs> no. Do you have you ever called them titties before, or do I just call them titties? Um, uh, I call them girls. <laughs> what? <laughs> <My> girls. <laughs> My girls. <laughs> All right, you're. I'm on a. I'm on a podcast right now, so I thought you had called them. It just came up, so we just had to get your actual answer. <laughs> yeah, they're titties too. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't like when I draw them, do you? No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that you draw them. I just wish you'd cover them up. <laughs> they what? just need some clothes. Why? I don't know. You have boobs? Yeah, and I cover them up. 
<laughs> I don't know. I just think that they look better. <laughs> That's not, I mean, they're natural. Yeah. <laughs> Our, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love you. Bye. I, what? I love you Thank too. you. Bye. Thank you, Jillian's mom. Bye. <laughs> We don't. Do we have to get her to sign a release form or something like that? Yeah, I, no, I hope not. <laughs> no, she was okay. Where were we before that? I don't even care anymore. I that was just so. Good. That was I such forgot. a good. I have. I have a question. I. I. We. You and I had a, a conversation. A couple conversations. A lot about. Um, like, like I say about for the last year, and one of them was talking about going back to art school. Mm-hmm. And I gave you what I think is bad advice. No, I but, don't think it was bad advice. But I, but I'm curious because like all the things that you were talking about in these conversations uh, were, you, it's like it almost like you've you are doing it on your own. Like I just like looking at this body of work. Like I just feel like it's all the conversations we were having at that time. You've had many conversations, but just in this particular about where you, you wanted your the direction of your work to go. Did, was it hard to be like, I'm not going go to go back to get uh, to go to grad school. I'm just going to, the things that I know I can do, I'm going to just start exploring and exploring and seeing where it takes me on my own. Like, was it, are, are you feeling like that it, you made the right decision? Yes. So I wanted to go to grad school and because I was like, well, maybe I'll teach, maybe... And two, I think it was something that I thought I needed to kind of prove myself or maybe get into like another category or even to just to grow. Because I think a lot of times I miss proper critique. I miss having conversations around art and like, I'm the first one, like I'll give my honest opinion about something. And I think that's a lot of what I miss, but just thinking about it, like, you know, when, like, I've talked to you plenty of times about when I, it's like, oh, I got to write my artist statement and I drag my feet. It's like the last thing in the world I want to do. Like, I hate writing about my work. Uh, so all the things that you do in grad school, I hate doing. <laughs> so yeah, it just wasn't, it's just not the right fit. And I think there's part of me that wishes I was that person, but I'm, I'm not. And I don't think there's like a point for me to pretend. I always, you know, it's, and I think about this all the time because uh, I think about going back to grad school all the time and literally not for any career thing, just for the conversations because I, in my mind, I feel like I had great conversations when I was in university. I mean, I don't know. It could have been awful. I was fucking high the whole time. But what <laughs> I assume is that they were great conversations, but and I always like thought, oh, maybe it's good for an artist after they'd been successful. Like you've had successful art shows, you you have a career, you have people that really love your work. Um, if going to grad school at this point would be like heighten your senses to things that you want to do, but also you seem to be doing it on your own. So good that you didn't throw one hundred twenty five thousand dollars or whatever into that. Yeah, and two, I'm glad I didn't go because I couldn't actually be there. You know, like I the know, whole experience. But, yeah. Like right now. Right. Would be so tough. And yeah. And two, it's just a lot of times it's hard to trust yourself. And I think that's all that I'm trying to do. Like, and two, this year, like, I stopped drinking and like I'm trying to do whatever I can to that it felt like it was in the way of me getting better. And that was just something for me that definitely was in my way. Um, so I'm just trying to do what I can on my own and get better about like trying to reach out and trying to find other ways that, you know, I can get feedback like that. And I like, I always appreciate it. Like you're always open to feedback. Like we'll talk about art and geek out about things. And it always is like a fresh perspective to talk, to speak to other people. Um, and yeah, so it's like, I, I, don't know. I don't think it would have been the right thing. And two, I think that it would have been, it could have actually hindered me. I feel like in a weird way, if I went, Mm. I would start thinking differently and then be stuck in some mind loop 
a feeling like I needed to do whatever my teacher said or like the same thing that I get caught up in in all aspects of life. So I I'm learning that I need to like trust my own gut a little bit more and stop feeling like I need to listen to people. And yeah, so right now I'm I'm kind of stepping away from that and more being like, okay, so I have this background of product. What can I do? What can I figure out to do on my own and do like smaller releases and I'm even like trying to figure out like where I fit in the gallery world. Is it something that I want to keep doing? So like next year, I don't have any shows planned unless like I have two next year, but that's it. And because I just kind of want to figure it out. Like everything feels like it's transitioning. I was going to ask you, we asked earlier about the biggest thing that you unlearned. What was the biggest thing that you learned from school that you still carry with you? connections i mean i think that was like the biggest thing is that how you managed to get into to that's how commercial i got into work? converse yeah mm-hmm. okay, yeah so someone else tricky. that went to ccs was she had interned at converse and then she became a full-time employee and then or they then recommended me and then yeah so it's just kind of who i knew and then that's in a way has it's just so important. Mm. Like who, you know, it's like one of those annoying things where a lot of times it actually, it comes into play. Yeah. And so, but I mean that in a way is too, is a good thing. Like now with the internet, you can meet so many people. I think it's about being a hard worker and a good person at the end of the day. So you kind of got to have that as well and like maintain relationships with people. Were you building your social media uh, presence at that time or was that sort of came after? In college? Mm. Was that around then? No. Mm -mm. No, I don't think Instagram came out until I was like in that converse. And then, I mean, I didn't have this style until four years ago. Mm. So I mean like, and then before that I was trying to do something that I was trying to build like something around. And I think I got like a thousand followers and then I stopped drawing for a year and it was just, that's when I was working at Tom's and I was just like, okay, maybe I should just give in and work in footwear. And that, I think that's when my like collapse was working there. I worked with some pretty awful humans that <laughs> I like. <laughs> you you want to give the shout out to anyone yeah, in particular? <laughs> I was so burnt out after that. It was like, mm. I can't. It was just, it was toxic. So where did this switch in style come from then? You said you found your style four years ago. I think I I started drawing at work because I was so annoyed. Like, oh, and I was that. just drawing like girls, like like angry, like girl faces. And it just started with me drawing heads. And I was just like, <laughs> and after I left there, a lot of like my old coworkers would text me and be like, found this random drawing of yours and it'd be like a girl with like like 666 in her eyes or something stupid like just like angry and annoyed where and like I don't know how these drawings ended up like randomly tucked in different spots but um they would like then pin them up their desk and you know it was like a lot of uh like just like girl had saying things like I'm fine, but like really being like crying and, or, um, like, I think I had a sticker that said goals before bros. Yeah. So it was, I was just like very angry, I guess. And that's where it came from. But then it slowly evolved into more. Was it a scary transition? Coming out of the corporate world is, you know, it's a, it's a check, you know, it's, you know, that you're, you know, that you've got something coming in. It's not easy. Yeah, it it was really scary. And like, after I left, I worked remotely for Snook. And that was what gave me like, then I could work from home. And I was able to like manage my time a little bit better. And then I paid off a bunch of stuff. I paid off my car. I got my overhead down really low. I took a manager position at my building. So my rent was only $800. And for like Los Feliz in LA, like, that's great. And then that's when I was able to leave. I was like, cool. I don't have a car payment. I'm paying $800 a month for rent. 
I can, I can do this. And then that's when I left. And I was like, and two, that was even a struggle in the beginning. Cause it would be like, I'd get screen prints done. And like, they definitely wouldn't all sell, you know, like it took me a long time and a lot of mistakes and a lot of like making things that I, no one bought. <laughs> we stay on this, this topic of style and sort of the territory that you're starting to kind of enter in. Like we've had conversations about Tom Wesselman or John Wesley, and it's always fascinating to me that we always talk about men who are depicting women in these sort of ways. And you're sort mm-hmm. of blazing a new territory as a female artist, as a woman painting the woman in this sort of kind of tradition of very, very um, minimal uh, figurative painting. Uh, are you, first off, I want to know if there's some other female artists that kind of ca- have blazed the path before you that you love, but also let's talk about blazing that path a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've always loved um, like Miss Van and uh, Margaret Kilgallen. I don't think they really, Miss Van touched on nudity. Margaret did not. But when it comes, I don't fully think when I'm drawing women, it's so much different than just me objectifying them. It's more of like what it physically feels like to be in that body. And I think that, and I love shapes. Like that's one thing that I've learned. Like I love shape and color and it's so much fun to get to draw a figure and try to find this balance of simplifying the shapes but still feeling not too abstract it gets still minimal like it's just I just get so much joy out of really finding the right like when I draw a line and it's like the right curve and it intermixes with like another line that just feels right is the best feeling and it's not like I'm like oh and like the body just has all those shapes where you get to play with like our bodies are weird and they bend and it's not just like a still object so there's so much to play with so I think that's a big part of it and then when it comes to nudity it's not like I'm even I mean, I'm like my mom. I've co- I always cover up my boobs. Like I'm not like walking around like actually being like free the free the nipple all the time, like braless and shirtless or something. But it's just that like I find boobs to be like a funny thing. They're really annoying in a way if you have them. Um. And, like, there's, like, sometimes I'll, like, depict, like, paintings of girls, like, grabbing their boobs. And, like, it's not a sexual thing. There's so many girls will message me after and be like, I do that, too. Like, it's just, like, an awkward thing. And they're just there. And it's not sexual. Like, you're just holding them, A, because you're used to wearing a bra. So when you don't have one on, it feels a little weird. Or they're just, like, they're lumps of fat that are, like, on your body that you didn't always have that are all of a sudden just part of you so there's like this other aspect of being in a woman's body that I don't think that we like talk about enough that isn't sexual it's just a weird thing like bodies are weird your paintings aren't sexual this is something that I find you know that you kind of touched on there that's worth maybe exploring a little bit and it's when you see a naked female it's so often something something sexual but for you it, it it isn't it entirely isn't or there are parts sometimes where it is I mean sometimes it can be a little bit but that's it's tough so as a female that is I have some curves like I'm not I'm not flat chested and I have a butt and hips <laughs> like I'm a female like I have like well anyone can have it. it doesn't matter but I like, for example, I think about a lot of times like how I can't wear some things that someone that's maybe flat chested could wear because I'll look slutty in it or weird. So it's like I it's I think the female figure is a weird thing where I usually lean drawing like 
curvier women, and I think it comes off as sexy to some people because curves are considered to be sexual, but it's almost frustrating. You know, it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, really there's curves. Like just because this figure is more curvy than that figure doesn't mean that it's more sexual, which is weird. Like it's a visual thing as humans. Is this like the difference between a dude coming into a gallery and talking to you about your art and a woman talking to you about your art? Yeah, totally. This... That's true. Yeah. Girls okay. don't ever That's... feel like my work is sexual. Yeah. Men, okay. men will. Right. Okay. And I will always just be like, there's nothing like that's that's one of the interesting things that I do. And it frustrates me, but I also find it interesting that some people really find it difficult to separate the female body from sex. Do you in that sense, do you feel better if you know a female has bought your paintings as opposed to a man? Or does it not matter to you? It doesn't matter. I think that I enjoy more a woman's perspective on it because there's a different relationship with it. Mm. But there are also a lot of men who buy my work that don't feel that the, or they'll like a lot of times, like I'll get a commission and it'll be like the dad buying a piece because their daughter loves my work and they don't feel like it's sexual. Like they don't say anything weird or like, mm -hmm. And like too, if I think if they did, they wouldn't be like, "Oh, like this is for my daughter." Yeah, yeah. this is for my daughter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. she's she's seventeen, <laughs> just gone through the change. Oh, yeah. oh Jesus! <laughs> I mean, it's possible, but yeah, I, I it's a funny thing, and I think it will slowly change. Or maybe, but like also sometimes I wonder. I don't know. Nudity is a funny thing. Like I was having a conversation with a friend the other day that was, do you, should you be naked in front of your partner all the time? Because then you kind of lose the appeal of it. You know, like it doesn't mm -hmm. feel special or like, like a surprise. What was the answer that's, to that, by the way? Yeah, that's, that's a good one. What, what, what was the verdict? Their verdict is like they would rather not see them naked all the time. So that they got the treat. Yeah. And I like, I personally feel like that, like, because when I'm doing things, I think that's another thing with my work comes up with like a place of being like, you're in your body, you're not thinking of the way it's bending. And the directions your boobs are falling, you know, but like, when you're trying to be sexy, like, you don't want like one nipple, like one boob falling <laughs> this way and another, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you mean, but I know what you mean. Looks like my mom doesn't listen to this now. Yeah. She's going to be like, what is happening with, what's happening with your boobs, Jillian? Why are they falling in all directions? Yeah, I mean, um, there's nothing really, when you're not having sex and not in the moment, there's nothing really that sexy about bodies half the time. Uh, context is a lot. It is. Yeah, I'm just gonna, context yeah. is almost everything. I don't, I don't know uh, where sorry. else to take that. Sorry. No, can... I, just trying no. not to, I'm just trying to make sure I don't cross any lines here. <laughs> Oh, and so what? another, sorry, we'll go back, going back to style. Right, right now, I'm super interested in, like, perspective of a body. So, like, the piece that is the cover of, or the, that's the flyer for this upcoming show, it's uh, a bird's eye view. It's just even the idea of, like, that's how I usually see my body when I look down, you know, in a way. I mean, I couldn't see my own head, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I see my boobs this way down and it's just interesting to think of the way we see our own bodies versus like just different perspectives of it because we'll never we'll never see it from the perspective of a partner a partner will no. see always they'll they'll know our entire being everything about us in a physical way uh as something different to the way that we've seen it which is yeah. quite a weird thing to kind of to understand yeah are you are you looking are you looking over right now? Because while we're talking to you, you're looking over to your studio. Is that what's going on? Yeah, but Can there's you... so much blank stuff. Okay. I think I'm looking it... at it, trying to find reference for you guys. And I know people. I'm sorry, guys. No one can like see this that's on the podcast. But if you can see, there's like a blank pad of paper, a blank canvas with just like chessoed, and those vases that I haven't painted. So I keep looking over there for something to talk about, but there's nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing helping me. 
One, mm-hmm. one of your vase, gallery. one of your vases is uh, is on our like little entry desk as you come into the Juxtapose office. So I always have a fond memory of 2017 Aww. Clubhouse for, with that that piece. Oh but... yeah, the cactus one, right? There's, a ca- there, there's meant there, to be a cactus think... in it. I was going to ask you if it was Cleon. You've got a Cleon Peterson print behind you. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he was he an inspiration for you or was because there's like I can see there's an alignment there's a parallel there between you two as artists. I think that he his work made because like I like limited color palette a lot, and he definitely inspired me or like his work helped me figure out a way to do limited color palettes like in full pieces so like this piece behind me I probably I got like probably six years six no yes six years ago it was just one of those things where like I was still working out my style and I think I looked at it one day and I was like okay he does limited color mm-hmm. how can like I apply this and like so I think that's like like I just <sighs> That's so interesting because he honed his chops in design as well. Yeah. Oh, did he? I mean, he worked at uh, Studio Number One for a while. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of an interesting parallel as well. I like honed his chops. <laughs> oh, did you like that <laughs> saying? I did. I, I don't Bro, think I've ever heard honed his chops. <laughs> um, Doug, I haven't slept in three days. I am on fire. No, it's fire good. Right I, I, I'm, I'm saying it's fire. a good, it's a nice thing. It's funny because you're like, uh, you, you're kind of, you're diametrically opposed. Yeah. So it's not in um, content or like what we're painting. I think it was just more of like, oh, like what I did get from him is like using the, my background color as my line work color. Yeah. So I think that was like something which so many people have done, but it was just more of like something clicked in my head working from home and then seeing that and being like, okay, I should try that. Or, which I think everyone should, if you're working, trying to figure out your style, like it is so much just honestly observing what you like. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the more I really realize the work that I love and enjoy and like push myself and challenge myself the more I enjoy my work like which we've Mm -hmm. talked about um what's his name Valdemir I'm gonna mess up his name Evan wait I didn't miss what you what (laughs) Valdemir what's his name Valdemir um he's normally a graphic designer and he did or Lautner but Sutner Sut. No, Can no, I, I know who you're talking. I know you're talking am about. I I'm breaking just trying- your brain. Yeah, you're breaking my brain. I feel like when I discovered his work, it was like such an interesting hidden gem because he only did this one body of figures, right? Mm-hmm. But like him and like Will Barnett, I love so much. I Will love Barnett, Charlie yeah. Harper. Like, I just love a. I love drawing, and b. I love trying to figure out ways to simplify things, but where it still reads is like interesting. And the negative space you know, is interesting. I liked it when you said Charlie Harper. I was wondering, because you said you drew animals for a while. Like, did, did your stuff look like Charlie Harper at all? Kind of, yeah. Like, he was a huge inspiration of mine. Okay, you guys? Yeah. Ladislav Sutner. Yes, okay, I know who you're talking about. I have a question, actually. Uh, you just recently did the collaboration with Billionaire Girls Club. Mm-hmm. My- and I was wondering if doing that sort of a he's dead, thing, by the way, that guy. It's, so he doesn't even. Need to oh, okay. He's yeah. not listening. We're talking about he was making work back in the seventies. Um. No, I think before that was sales date. Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you saying, Evan? Billionaire. Okay, you recently did the collaboration with Billionaire Girls, Girls Club, um, and I was wondering if you come from an apparel and footwear background. If like doing kind of a collaboration with a clothing brand that's kind of bigger like that brought back any sort of memories or or if it was something where uh, you, it was kind of exciting to see your artwork, your actual personal artwork kind of in such a cool capsule collection like that. 
you know what's funny is it it was exciting it was exciting to get to see everything I really only did the graphics and then they applied them um so I didn't really have much part in like the design portion of like what is going on you, you didn't say to them like look I got this don't worry yeah no trust me I at one point I tried I was like trying to make custom stuff and they're like, "Uh, we're just going to do, but two, like, I I think initially the plan was to do more custom and like, but then COVID happened. Like this was supposed to release back in March and then it ended up releasing like September um, because yeah, it was just like a whole thing. Um, But I do think being in product and constantly seeing my stuff for like eight years come to life and seeing it in real life ha- did take away that excitement a little bit mm. but once you've seen how the sausage is made yeah because like i can kind of already envision it like i know he hates my oh wait, you got to say <laughs> cut your chops i'm talking about sausages <laughs> i want to see how many pig references I'm, i can get in this <laughs> I'm sorry. Like when you said that, I just I started giggling just because it, it's actually a really good. It's it was, it's a, a good, it was really perfectly good. valid. I don't yeah, know why you started giggling. Valid. I know why no. I started breaking it down too, and then I was like, "Oh, this kind, of, kind of gross." Also, the juxtapose office is right next to a sausage factory, so um, I, I I just kind of went to all sorts of places. <laughs> sorry, is that well, is that's is that a gentleman's it club? It's not a gentleman. Italian owned sausage factory. Pricos. <laughs> um <laughs> sorry. This is getting <laughs> This is what happens when you do podcasts with people that you like and are friends with, like already, because it just goes Everyone's into gonna these... turn this thing off. They're gonna be like, This is no, just they won't. talking. I think you can just get the part with my mom on. People are gonna request for Pam to come on. That was Oh, we didn't ask her name actually. Yeah, we needed that. Thank you. That was a hit. Oh, just look in my comment section on my Instagram, surely. I'm being your biggest fan. She likes to <laughs> so leave that comment often. That's that's adorable. <laughs> I love it. I was going to ask you, just sort of in that thread, what did you get from street art? What did you seek to get from doing outdoor stuff that you... Like, this was a lot of people that we've spoken to start, on ca- uh, start in the streets and then move to canvases. You started on canvases and then moved into the streets. What was it you were looking for and what was it that you got from this? The challenge. I mean, I think that there's something so exciting to paint, like, bigger than you. Like, it's, and murals are work. Like, you, it takes, like, there's a huge learning curve to really figuring out how to scale something up and how to manage your time, how much paint it's going to take. Like, and two, it's, what I imagine what it would be like, which is nothing like it's so much easier probably than building a house, but you're exhausted at the end of the day. Like when you paint like murals, I feel like there is something that you have to put your entire body into, which is so much different than painting at, you know, a smaller scale. Uh, So for me, it was never really about like getting my work out to um, push it on people or for like, to get more eyes on it it was definitely more of like I want to paint that big like I'm so small like I want to like push myself and see and like just see what's possible like because it seems so daunting mm. yeah um but yeah Do so you- I'm like I had I'm stepping away from doing murals though because I've I don't love them as much as I did at one point. Why? I think that A, I am definitely a little bit of a homebody. And also it is a lot of work. Especially like there's sometimes where like I think I'm getting to this age <laughs> where like me being small sometimes it is like, God damn it. Like how am I gonna carry all of this things and like it just sometimes it's such a physical challenge <laughs> where I'm just like, I can't like, is it worth that amount of money for me to like get to the home, like fly all the way across the country, rent a car, get to the home Depot, get all of the paint, 
carry everything, pack it all away. And like, is there's just a lot that goes into it where I'm just sometimes. And then two with murals, for me, a lot of times I have to cover them up. So it's not, I don't even get to do what I want to do. You can't do the titties? I can't do, I can't paint the girls with their girls. And it's just, I don't, that's not what I want to do. Like, I don't want to just do girls in like bathing suits. It's like Pam hires me to do murals. That's what it feels like. I heard a quite a cute story about you and Home Depot. Every time you go, you send yeah. you send Pam a message. Yeah, I've... Pam used to design kitchens at Home Depot. So also, my mom, she has a good sense of humor. I'm She's the one Pam that out. made me realize that there is an an aisle of um, chains, ropes. And like, have you seen that Home Depot thing where it's like basically seems like a BDSM aisle? Okay, no, I haven't seen that. I've been to multiple Home Depots in Miami, so yeah, I've seen all sorts of things I never thought I was going to be seeing. I bet the Miami ones are a little extra. No, it's just funny that the aisle is like it says. It's just funny the way it's like labeled. But Fifty Shades. I'm trying to find it, but speaking of Miami, speaking of Miami, and. In- this is like for all of us, like we're actually coming up on the time when we would all be going to Miami. Like, are we all feeling a little like reminiscent or feel like you're missing something? Cause I I'm starting to feel a little bit like I, I miss a challenge, but you have a show opening up. So it's different. I am going to miss seeing people. I mean, Basil, that's the only, like, that's why I love it. Like I get to see all these artists that live in other countries and that's been the hardest thing. Like even, I don't know, like I love, I love art and I love shows and I love the people that make it and not actually getting to hug those people is sad. I'm fine not going to the art fairs. <laughs> They're so yeah, overwhelming that, to yeah. me. Yeah, for, for sure. For sure. I, I do like just the the feeling of um not having this project look to look forward to and like seeing friends i like it dawned on me like the other day and i kind of like got like upset about what's mm. going on yeah i was gonna say you were always so stressed out at Bas- like around basil and like this brings me to my next question jillian what is going on with your actual physical opening are you having an opening like what are you guys doing to celebrate the fact that you've made this really really great body of work that hopefully people can see like what's what are the conditions and what are, what can people expect with the show yeah so it's interesting because studio one shepherd's design studio is above uh subliminal projects so since covid happened in order to give them more space they have moved the working space down to the gallery so the gallery is not even open during the week it's only going to be open during the weekends and people can make appointments and go um and i think they're like 20 or 30 minute appointments each and five people at a time um which is actually if you, have you got made any appointments and gone to galleries it's a nice way to see it if you're uh, uh if from that side it's great I'm, yeah i'm supposed to go to a museum next week so i, I yeah. yeah, you get you get the space and you get the time and you're like okay cool this is actually like i i don't hate this part yeah, it's been, and it's like, and it feels like you're like grateful to get out of the house and getting to see art. Yeah. So it feels special. It's actually, it is nice. I mean, yes, of course, like there's a part of me that's like, I'm bummed. Like I don't get the whole opening, getting to see people. Shepard's not going to be DJing, like the whole subliminal thing. Right. But whatever, like it's an art show and there's way more important things going on right now but yeah we're gonna i'll be there opening day and i'm gonna try to drop in like other days as well and then i think shepherd and i are gonna do like a a zoom or something like a live q a because him and i really haven't even spoke too much yeah i'm interested to talk to him too because it's funny when i first started at converse that's when he really started blowing up and he had a show at the ica in Boston and it's like Converse went like our design team went as like a offsite and like his manager spoke and all that but I don't think he was there because it was like when he was going through something with Detroit and like possibly Mm. going to jail and 
yeah, it's just weird looking back. Like I can't imagine telling myself at that being like, Oh, you're going to be showing at his gallery in 11 years. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that it? If we come to the end of the, the journey? Yeah, I mean that was like. I feel like that's we, a nice we place to end it. We haven't had a ninety-minute podcast like that in no, a while. Like it was just like. I mean, most of that was seamless. trying to find the Russian guy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes in the art world, you find yourself talking to a complete stranger like you've known them for years, and for me, this was one of those moments. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to check out Still 